Let's change gears now and ask, how much do you really know about what's going on in your head? There are many things we don't know about how our brains work, but our next guest has a pretty good idea. John Medina is a molecular biologist specialising in human brain development and he's the author of bestsellers Brain Rules and Brain Rules for Baby. And he joins us now in the studio to get our brains well geared <laughs> and in track. Thank God someone's going to do it. Really nice to meet you, John Medina. Good morning. Thank you for having me. This is such an interesting area to work in, isn't it? I mean, this really seems to be the, the new frontier of, of biological science. Um, it seems that we can't hear too too much these days about brain development, plasticity, and, and the potential that it has. Yeah. So much so is that there's lots of myths out there. I imagine, and part yeah. of Brain Rules writing it was to try and see if I could break some of those down. For example, you may have heard that you only use 10% of your brain. Have you heard that before? Yeah, yeah. yeah take it, throw that out. You don't use 10% of your brain. You use lots more of your brain when you're busy doing your job or when I'm busy talking. You may have heard that there is a left brain personality and yes. a right brain. Have you heard that before? Yeah. You take it, throw that out. You need both hemispheres to make a frickin' personality. Mm. So a lot of brain rules is an attempt to do some myth-busting and to also discuss what it is that we do know about the brain to be able to talk about this interesting revolution. It is, it is such a, a revolution. And in, in busting those myths, what have you found then that, that we can do as individuals yeah. to maximise our brain power? Because that seems to be what we're all after here, mm. which is to, to keep our brain for as long as we can, to keep it active, to keep it engaged and well-functioning. Sure. Well, one of the things we know is that, and it's fairly new, is that if you exercise for a period of time, you can actually increase a very particular type of brain function. Now, I'm the perfect spokesperson for this because I don't want this brain rule to be true. <laughs> <laughs> but aerobic exercise, <laughs> what I had to do is I had to put a treadmill in my laboratory because I lead a very sedentary life. Yeah. And I knew the first chapter was going to be about this extraordinary story about exercise. And that people like me were going to sit here and go, why what? should I yeah, listen exactly. to you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the hypocrisy <laughs> meter just goes <laughs> way <laughs> off the line. So I, I weighed about 248 pounds when I got started. And all I did was that I just started, whenever I had to write a grant or when I was writing a paper, these days a book, is that I just started walking about 1.8 miles per hour on a treadmill. I built a little board so that I could put my laptop on it, mm. and pretty soon those pounds were starting to go away, and they continued to go. Okay, the pounds went away, but what happened with your brain activity? I've never felt intellectually stupid, but I have never felt clearer in my life than when I have been more fit than not. Mm. We now know that if you do an aerobic workout, 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity, which in a seven day period, that's like walking too fast to sing, it's yeah. nothing. In our evolutionary history, we were probably walking 10 to 20 kilometers a day. Mm. So we were really fit. Now we died at age 30 back then, but we were really fit until we died. If you just tilt just a little bit your behavior towards that, max, that end, you can actually watch changes in something we call executive function. Yes. Now, executive function has two components to it. The first one is your ability to take a look at a whole disparate set of data and then turn it into a pattern that you can actually make sense of. People that have executive function are also really good at math. Um, you two probably have really good executive function because the other one is the ability to split attentional states. You've got something in your ears right now and you're probably listening to your director at the same time you're also listening to me. Or, tr or trying not to listen. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to get you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, director. <laughs> <laughs> but the nature of, of good executive function is your ability to time splice between those two. Mm. We know that the brain cannot multitask, so you can't do two things at the same time. Yeah. If what we call your attentional spotlight could multitask, you could literally open up a book and read the left page with the left eye and the right page with the right eye down the middle simultaneously and discover the whole thing. Mm. You can't do that. Mm. You got to start at one end and then go down so you are in a linear perspective. Speaking, yeah, please go on. Well, I was going to say is that exercise, the more fit you are, the more the better executive function you have and the better you can listen to your director at the same time you're also conducting an interview. So I should just get up and get a treadmill in and I think we do should both have, things at once. Well, we should maybe have a standing position where we're on treadmills sort of reading out the news from time to time. Well, exactly would that, would right. that be a better way of yeah. doing it? Well, one thing you can also show is not only should you be walking about 1.8 miles per hour while you're conducting this interview, you could also show this. There is a, if you've done any exercise, are you familiar with the endorphin rush? Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. You got that buzz that's going mm. on that lasts for about two hours. You can show, it's not just endorphins, it's also dopamine, which is yes. really good for the brain, for, particularly for learning. And you can show that if you have to do a period of intense learning, it's much better that you do an aerobic workout, a good strong one, to go for an hour for an aerobic workout, and then don't take a shower. Wipe down so that you're socially competent, but then go and learn something. 
Because at that spot, I, I, I think that the most wasted hour that exists in all of exercise land is exactly what happens when you're finished. When you're finished, your brain is so alive. This has actually been measured with a group of people that had to learn Mandarin, and their rate of Mandarin went up. Their rate, okay, the rate of acquisition of, of vocabulary and grammar went up 20%. You'll be smart, but you'll be smelly, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won't have any friends, but by golly, you'll be better than the rest of them. Our time is very short, um, but I did want to ask ask you because you have very interesting observations to make in here about sleep yeah. and mm. what what we need sleep for sure. and what sleep our brain does and doesn't need yeah, yeah. our brain doesn't sleep we have no idea why you need to sleep we until about three years ago we had no idea what sleep because it's extraordinarily risky behavior in the Serengeti if you're asleep yeah. you're gonna be somebody's lunch right yeah. we now know why you need to sleep it's not for energy restoration because it's you don't get a lot of energy restoration you can show, tonight when you guys go to bed, if you remember any part of this interview, you are going to replay this interview in your head thousands of times at night and in a compressed form. We now know at a very particular age part of the sleep cycle, we now know why you need to sleep. You need to sleep so you can turn off all the stuff that's been buzzing around in your head all day and you can concentrate on what it is that happened. You need to sleep so you can learn. Right. I'm going to replay this interview a thousand times. Thanks, Whoa. mate. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would ever think it's happening on the news cycle, right? Why, I don't know about you. Why couldn't you be George Clooney sitting on the couch then if I've got to replay it a thousand <laughs> times? Oh. <laughs> I feel smarter than George. You're a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. It's really nice to meet you. Fascinating book. Oh, what a pleasure, Richard. Thanks for taking the time. Michael, nice oh, to meet you. I feel smarter <laughs> than I did five minutes ago. There good you go. Thank you.